Welcome. It's Documentation Office Hours. This is the 26th of May, 2023. Topics for today, the 2.401.1 Change Log and Upgrade Guide, Internationalization and Localization, a new poll request and some opportunities to review there. Uh, if Chris joins us, we can talk about Google Summer of Code and we'll talk about end of life notifications in Jenkins Core. Any other topics you want to put on the list, Meg? Looks good to me. All right, so let's take a first look at topic number one, the 2.401.1 changelog with Kevin out of the office. I've created it, and so here's what it looks like. If you've got capacity, Meg, I'd love to have you review. If you don't, don't worry about it. Nope, happy to do it. This is one of those that... Um, these things are phrased a very specific way. Daniel Beck has guided us on how to do those. And so um, comments are welcomed and happily encouraged. Okay. So what, what this will then do is next Wednesday, when the LTS releases, this will be available and merged. And that's what will show up on the change log here and on the upgrade guide here. Okay. So uh, Bruno will also review it, and I suspect Alex Brandis will review it. So we've got good, oh, good review there. Next topic then was on internationalization and localization. So this one, we've got a pull request from, from Jeffrey Chen, a new contributor. Uh -huh. The pull request is bringing back an old pull request that had been started and then stalled. So we had marked uh -huh. it as stalled, and Jeffrey said, hey, I'd like to work on it. So started work on it, and Jeffrey's work is now visible here, and we've been going through a series of improvements to try to get it ready. Right now, it's running through the build. What I had done was um, Jeffrey gave some initial changes that looked like this. So here you see the top level page. Notice that it's still marked with the work in progress flag. He added a whole new page, or rather the original pull request did. And then the top level page still showed as work in progress with a link to the new page. Uh -huh. I took a, a little broader approach and said, hey, let's do it this, this other way. And so what I did was put the content that he had created in the top level page ah. as a series of, of, hey, do this, do this, links to how-to guides, and then placed the integration to crowd in right next to it and linked inside because crowd in is this great tool that we use for to support our translators. Right. And I asked Jeffrey, hey, are you okay if I apply my changes onto your pull request? Jeffrey's answer back seems to be yes. Mm -hmm. And so I've gone ahead and done that. And it's now building. I just pushed it uh, just a few minutes ago. Okay. So, so we'll be able to see that. And this is another one, Meg, I'd love to have a review, particularly because we want to we'd like to have this done well enough that people can understand it. There are two or three cases where translators can do the easy thing. If their plug, if the plugin they're working on is supported by crowd in, they just have to do this translate messages in crowd in. Right. And it talks them how to do that. It's, it's a really nice interface. If it's not supported in crowd in the easiest thing is ask the maintainer, to please put it into crowd in. <laughs> oh, but if they don't do that, then there are these steps that describe, okay, here's how you do it the hard way. Do you see the and typo in number one? I do, and I fixed okay, it, good. and it'll be in the next generated okay. update. Okay. Yes, thank you. Nice catch. That's the sort of thing one misses. I just... What, exactly. Like, you look at them too much. Uh-huh. So, okay. so this is... This is what what the the concept here is that this is wandering between how to guides these three here and the reference guide. The, so the uh -huh. reference book has links that take people back and forth <coughs> depending on which I think made most sense. And oh, yeah, I like that structure. So so we we hope that 
they will find this useful. It's and the content is much fuller now. There's much more content now. Uh -huh. So if if you're available to review it, absolutely. And for me, there the additions are at least good enough for us to consider. Are we ready? Are we good enough to merge? Yeah. Okay, I will look at that either tonight or tomorrow. Great, thank you. All right, on Google Summer of Code, since Chris isn't here, we'll move this later. Next topic was end of life notifications in Jenkins Core. So this one is a process that I'd started discussing in Platform SIG and in Docs Office Hours. Oops to warn users when their operating system is no longer supported because we don't support operating systems that the vendor doesn't support. And so this now gives us a user interface inside Jenkins that says, you're running on an operating system we won't be supporting in the not too distant future. Uh, this, yep. the example we see here is specifically CentOS 7 and I've proposed uh -huh. that we will accelerate its end of life. It would officially end life June of 2024. We're going to end life in the Jenkins project in November of 2023, because bye, this thing bye. is an albatross around our necks. <laughs> oh, God, what a horrid system that was. <laughs> well, it's it's impressive how long lived it is. It is Isn't very it? impressive. Yeah. And so, so the the message here is takes them through it. Now we've got a number of activities that have to be done, and I've put some notes in here on those. We'll need a blog post, and to to go with the blog post, we'll want a community.jenkins.io post that tells people so that people can have conversations about the blog post. The other thing is this gives us an, a dedicated operating system redirect page, or it gives us a link to an operating system page. But right now that link is just going to a generic uh, Linux support page. Okay. And I think what we want to do is, I'm going to show it to you, and I think we want to switch this generic, this general purpose page to be specific. So I'm going to follow that hyperlink. Notice that all it did is it redirected to the Linux support policy. And I ah. suspect we want a dedicated page for this that says, hey, and maybe it's just a link to the blog post initially. Yeah. What do you think? What what would you yeah. recommend? What will what is help? actually I have a, a pretty a free question. What does supported mean here? It does not mean the support organ. There is no support organization for support. Correct. It, it does not. It so in this we case, don't, it doesn't run. We don't test against it. Right. So the 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 simplest way of describing supported is if we if we run automated tests against it and are committed to maintaining it running on that, we call it level one. Okay. And we enumerate them specifically here. Okay, sixty four bit okay. Linux on Debian, on Red Hat, on OpenSUSE, 64-bit Linux, and those are the AMD 64 when 64-bit Linux on ARM and on System 390. Uh -uh. Um, and containers. So they are explicitly listed. Then there are others where we say, we'll, we're willing to consider patches, but we don't test them. We okay. don't actively test, and we may drop support without telling anybody. 32 bit, for instance, uh, Risk Five, um, other exotic architectures like MIPS. Uh -huh. And then any version not supported by the vendor, we don't support. So, did that answer your question on the meaning yeah. of support? Right. Yeah. 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 This was one that was vetted originally. I think Oleg Nanashev created this Linux support policy page and made very, was very careful to be sure that people understand this is not any statement of the existence of a support organization. It's rather right. that here are the things we test and here are the things we don't test. Yeah. And nicely if, done. go ahead. Oh, no, I just said nicely done. Hmm. Yeah. So, so the idea, but 
this page will certainly be linked from the blog post, but I think maybe I will just make this redirect go to the blog post so that people also then have a, a forum at the bottom of the page that they where they can have more conversations. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Let me make a note of that. Um, link. Are there people out there who love CentOS 7 and... Oh, yes, absolutely. Well, and there are companies out there who say the only thing you can use is CentOS 7. And, and they largely don't care that it's reaching end of life. It's They've chosen it all those years ago, and they they expect you to keep using it. And the answer is, you're free to keep using it. We just won't support it. Right. Great. So that was all the topics that I had for today, Meg. Any other topics for you? Nothing for me. Okay. Oh.